To introduce us to the newest members of the ICAST Foundation Air Show Hall of Fame, I'd like to introduce a past recipient of the ICAST Sword of Excellence, the Art Show Showmanship Award, the Bill Barber Award for Showmanship, and a member of the Air Show Hall of Fame, Sky Talker Danny Clisham. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You're at that one. Okay. <clears throat> You're over there, Danny. I'm over here. All right, good. The ICAST Foundation is the tax exempt 501c3 sister organization managed by its own board of volunteer directors and dedicated to promoting the air show industry, preserving its history, recognizing and commemorating professionals who have made lasting contributions to our business, assisting individuals and families in need, and supporting future pilots and performers through aviation scholarship programs. Tonight, on behalf of the Foundation, Danny will introduce us to the Foundation Hall of Fame's newest inductees. Danny. Thank you. Thank you, General. And uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Foundation. I'd like to ask Steve Oliver, Chairman of the Foundation's Hall of Fame Selection Committee, to join me on stage. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. On behalf of the ICAST Foundation, I want to thank everybody, past, present, and future, who have supported us and has allowed us to present over $100,000 worth of scholarships. Tonight, we will induct into the ICAST Foundation Hall of Fame, numbers 57, 58, and 59, and most importantly, the family fund that on 23 occasions has immediately been able to help families with misfortune to the tune of $230,000. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. The ICAST Foundation Hall of Fame was established back in 1995 to honor those who have made a significant contribution to the air show industry. This includes, but is not limited to, pilots, announcers, event organizers, designers, and builders. Nominations are considered by a selection committee appointed by the ICAST Foundation Board of Directors. This evening, 50 current members of the ICAST Foundation Air Show Hall of Fame will be joined by three additional air show legends. We're going to get started by paying tribute to one of the greatest air show performers of the mid 20th century. Mr. Jeff Lee, let's roll that clip, please. Bill Adams was blessed with unique talents that helped him become the country's top air show performer throughout much of the 1950s and 1960s. He had the swagger and flair of a natural born showman, effortless and engaging charm, superior airmanship, and an inherent ability to generate abundant and positive media coverage. In other words, the full package. Early on, Adams ushered in a new era of air show flying, proving that a performer's ability to connect with reporters and spectators while on the ground was just as important as his ability to fly the airplane. Adams was among the first to recognize how powerful a tool a performer could be in generating pre-show news coverage, which could help increase ticket revenue. And he became a master at it. Adams also helped to professionalize our business. He was among the first to land a national sponsor, and he flew to each air show site with multiple aircraft and a full team of support professionals. A thoughtful and astute businessman, he proved that performers should be able to both pursue their passion for air show flying and to make a decent living at it. But Adams was above all else a skilled and entertaining barnstormer, expertly putting his 450 horsepower Stearman through its aerobatic paces at hundreds of air shows throughout the United States for more than a decade. As air show legend Dwayne Cole once famously observed, Wisconsin is famous for three things beer, cheese, and Bill Adams. Ladies and gentlemen, the newest inductee into the ICAST Foundation Air Show Hall of Fame, Bill Adams. And ladies and gentlemen, 
Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of his father, here to accept the award is Bill Adams, Jr. Thank you. I'd like to thank the Foundation's Selection Committee, the late Bob Nance for saving the NBC footage, and a very special thanks to Mr. Sonny Everett for locating that footage and seconding this nomination. We are forever grateful to you. Aerobatics and air show teams have produced some of the greatest men and women, many in this room, and accomplishments the world has ever seen. It is an honor to stand before you and witness this incredible space being made for my dad in his life of flying. He was a humble, self-made man, born in 1925, with just an eighth grade education, became a commercial pilot that flew air shows all over the United States. In 1952, he began his career with Cole Brothers Air Show and performed for them for 10 years. Also, when dates allowed, he flew for Bill Sweet's national air shows. In the winter of 1962, he formed Bill Adams Air Show, and by 1964, it was one of the most highly sought after air shows in the country. As a teen, I remember August 1964, the Beatles performed in Cincinnati to an audience of 14,000. Two days later, Bill Adams Air Show performed to a crowd of more than 30,000. <laughs> in, in 1966, Ford Motor Company contracted him to fly his Stearman through a hangar with a wing rider. It was filmed as a commercial for a large dealer convention. And I would pay $2,000 if anybody can find that film. He also appeared on a, two nationally televised sports programs, CBS Sports Spectacular and NBC Sports in Action. For the duration of his career, he strived to be and was a great ambassador of aviation and a major contributor to the success of air shows. Dr. Gordon F. Mork Morkel, former president of the Stearman Restorers Association wrote, Bill Adams was to air shows what Charles Lindbergh was to air transportation. Bill Sweet said, Bill Adams and his steermen left in the skies a path of flying greatness. Times change, processes improve, and new lives of accomplishment are lived. But I would like to challenge you to remember and find out more about Bill Adams, Debbie Gary, and Bob Davis. We remember the past to bring about the greatest possible future. Greatness must be preserved to inspire others. Finally, I'd like to close with this childhood memory. <laughs> Back in the 50s and 60s, when he would return from an air show, he would buzz the house to let my mother know he was back and to head to the airport. <laughs> so I asked him if he would fly over our school sometime, because I always look forward to just seeing it any time I could in the air. So sometime when we're out for recess. So within two weeks, um, just past the very far end of the playground, we could hear an airplane coming. And over a riverbed, below treetop level, upside down with smoke on, <laughs> I couldn't believe I couldn't believe it. I, I didn't expect that. Just flying over right side up, I would have been so excited. <laughs> but all my classmates, everybody, in, it was an elementary school. I couldn't believe it. I was so proud. And at that moment, I was the coolest kid. <laughs> at, <laughs> at St. James Catholic School. Uh, thank you for your time and the space you've created for my dad to always be remembered and appreciate. And God bless you and God bless my dad. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> thank you. Come on over here. Steve's going to present you with the award. Let's move right up here like we rehearsed. <laughs>
You bet. <laughs> While we're doing photo opportunities, uh, the stories would come back to Ann Arbor from Bill Barber and Eddie Green and, and Jimmy Minning working with Bill Adams Sr. and uh, sometimes the late Harold Cryer as well, another air show great. And Bill Barber labeled them as the all Catholic air show because Adams, Cryer, Minning, and Barber would get up early in the morning on Sunday morning and go to 7 a.m. mass, get a little breakfast, and then head out for the briefing at 11 o'clock, which we haven't seen an 11 o'clock briefing in about 45 years. <laughs> and uh, that early uh, church service on Sunday morning all got them back home safely on Sunday night. <laughs> Now we have the opportunity, so many family members of Bill Sr., Bill Jr., and Bill III are making their way up on stage. They've come from all over the country, and they were an integral part of his life, either, either wives or fathers or brothers and uh, grandsons. So we're going to bring them all up here. And I'd like, you, <laughs> I'd like you to observe this, if you will. If you ever want to see what Bill Adams looked like when he was alive, Bill Adams III is a spitting image of his grandfather, and that is no exaggeration. All right, you folks, come on up here. We'll get a nice photo shot. Pull in right here. Fill in that spot right there. Fill in that spot right there. There we go. 